To our viewers, once again, the special election for District 4 is on November 7th. If you haven't already voted already, please cast your ballots. Voting centers are open from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. every day until November 6th. Here at CBS 8, we strive to bring you balanced, informative coverage on the major issues impacting our community. On November 7th, District 4 voters will decide between Monica Montgomery Stepp and Amy Reichert for the San Diego County Board of Supervisors. The winner will fill Nathan Fletcher's vacant seat until 2027. Leading up to this special election, there are several pressing issues on the minds of voters. Joining us right now to discuss their stance on four of those issues like homelessness and immigration is Monica Montgomery Stepp and Amy Reichert. Each candidate will have 30 seconds to answer each question. Thanks for being here. Ladies, let's start off with homelessness here in San Diego. How would you handle this ongoing crisis? Amy, let's start with you. Homelessness right now is absolutely heartbreaking. We have never seen it as worse off as it is right now. I live in San Diego County, and as I look to the city of San Diego, I see a failure of the status quo. We're seeing tremendous suffering on our streets. We need to do better as a county, and we can work regionally on solutions. And that's why we need to have people with lived experiences come to the table, and we need to go to the people that are in the trenches, the nonprofits who have programs that are working, and we need to address the root causes in some cases, which is a mental health crisis and drug and alcohol addiction. All right, Monica, what's your stance on this? Well, thank you so much for have, having me. We know that uh, our homelessness population is not a monolith. We have single mothers who are staying in cars with their children, taking a shower at the gym and going to work and acting as if nothing is wrong. We have our veteran population. We have a, a, a very large growing demographic in our seniors. And so what we need is affordable housing. We need permanent supportive housing for people who need wraparound services. We need a mental health service behavioral health services, and we need to work together to ensure that people can receive the resources that they need. New numbers show violent crimes in San Diego County are down. This year, Sandag is reporting 44 homicides and 679 rapes compared to 53 homicides and 949 rapes last year. Property crimes accounted for 58% of all crimes committed. Robberies are down at 12% with 1,180 reported in the first six months of the year. Monica and Amy, what needs to be done to maintain this downward trend? Monica, we'll start with you. Well, Eric, I did read that mid-year uh, Sandag report that I think you're referring to with good news. We know that people are still experiencing and are the victims of violent crime, and certainly we want to keep those people in mind. But what I have done as an elected official thus far is bring solutions to the table that will supplement what our officers are doing. For example, we championed the No Shots Fired program at the city of San Diego that reduced gang homicides across the city by 65%. Those are the types of programs we need to continue and maintain um, crime levels going down. All right, and Amy, what is your take when it comes to crime? The a County Board of Supervisors has two big jobs, that's public safety and public health. And as I sit here, I am the only candidate who is endorsed by the San Diego Police Officers Association. And they support me because I support public safety and I am against the kind of anti-police rhetoric that has been so common by elected officials in the city of San Diego. Right now, we are seeing some increases in crime, such as hate crimes are up and violent crime against elderly. So I sit here as the endorsed candidate mm -hmm. from the San Diego Police Officers Association. I will protect our protectors and I will protect our public safety. And as you both know where the uh, border town San Diego is, over the last year we have seen a wave of migrants trying to cross our border. Over the last several weeks, in fact, Border Patrol has dropped off nearly 20,000 migrants into San Diego. How would you address this ongoing crisis? And Amy, we're gonna start with you. Our border is broken, and right now, San Diego County is broken. Right now, the county reports that 400,000 county residents are severely rent 
burdened. That means the rent is just too damn high right here in San Diego. We have to be able to take care of San Diego County residents first. I disagree with the San Diego County Board of Supervisors recent vote to spend COVID money on migrant relief. We need to focus on homelessness solutions here and our housing crisis and take care of San Diego County residents. Monica, your stance when it comes to migrants here. Yes, we know that Border Patrol right now is dropping folks off at the border every single day. We know that uh, nonprofit organizations in our community have taken folks in. 90% of the people that come here um, leave San Diego within three or four days. But we know that there is a crisis. We need to lean on the federal government to help us. But in the meantime, the county is the public health agency and has the responsibility to ensure that all residents here are safe. Let's discuss housing now. San Diego, the most expensive place to live in the U.S. We were number one on the list by U.S. News and World Report. They based it on the cost and housing of housing and rent. According to their analysis here, the median home price, $919,000. Median rent, $1,800. Number two on the list was Los Angeles, followed by Honolulu. Monica and Amy, what needs to be done to make our housing here more affordable? Monica, we're going to start with you. Yes, we need to build more housing and we need to build more housing in all levels, low income and middle income especially. We have to use public land in order to be able to do this. It reduces the cost of building units, but we also have to invest in first time home buyers, folks who want to stay and live here and keep their talent here. This really is about increasing our units on the market and ensuring that our people here who have built this region have the opportunity to stay in San Diego. Amy, your thoughts on our housing crisis? Since 2020, according to county data, 50,000 people have left San Diego County. And when people are leaving, they tell me, Amy, you know what? I just wanna go someplace where I can afford a single family home. San Diego County has completely failed on this level by not building what people want in the past 20 years. As a result, what we've been seeing is huge swaths of homes that are built in Southern Riverside, which are really detrimental to our environment and clogging up the 15. Let's build sensibly and also take care of our environment and build what people want so that they can stay and thrive right here in San Diego. All right, now I'd like to take a moment to uh, open up the floor for final remarks from both of you. This is your uh, last opportunity to explain why our viewers uh, should be voting for you, why you think you're the best candidate for District 4, and Amy, we'll start with you. In the past couple of years, I have stood up for our first responders and saved their jobs when their civil rights were being violated. I'm really proud of that track record. I'm a heart-centered candidate. I will stand up for what's for right for the people of San Diego. I can tell you sitting here, I have zero special interest money behind me. My opponent has $1.1 million in special interest money. So I can honestly come in to county supervisor and say on the very first day that I am beholden to no one except for the people of San Diego. What people want at the end of the day is a safe place to live that they can enjoy with their friends and family, where they can thrive with their mm -hmm. loved ones. And that's what I will do for San Diego. And Monica, your final remarks here. Yes, this is an extremely important position that I have dedicated the majority of my career and my life to fighting for our most vulnerable communities. That's why I am endorsed and proud to be endorsed by our healthcare workers at the County of San Diego. I am endorsed by our top cop of the state, the Attorney General, Rob Bonta. I am endorsed by our Secretary of State, uh, Dr. Shirley Weber. But not only that, I bring experience to this job. I have been the chair of the city's budget committee that has uh, convened a $5.2 billion budget. I've brought over $100 million of investment into my current community. I want to broaden that experience and give that experience to the people of our region because they deserve it. All right, thank you both so much for coming in to discuss these pressing issues. Thank you. Thank you.